What's up, my beautiful people? This is Kristen Peoples coming to you with BossOfCulture.org. I hope you're doing fabulous today. I am coming to you today with a very, very serious topic, but have no fear because I am here to school you on how to deal with workplace mobbing and bullies in general. This is your ultimate guide. And when I tell you your ultimate guide, because I've been there and done that, I'm taking you to school today. So without further ado, let's make sure that we like this video because I am sharing with you guys valuable content of years of experience of workplace bullying abuse and how I overcame it, how I navigated through it, and how you can too. So make sure that we share this video with anyone that we think may benefit from this information. Also subscribe because I have more videos of how to navigate and also how to heal. Um, a whole library, a whole plethora of information, things I want to share with you guys, modalities, all kinds of things, all kinds of treats, all kinds of treasures. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel and give me a thumbs up, you guys. Give me a thumbs up. Show me some love. Collect some good karma. When you do good, you get good. So I am Kristen Peoples, if you don't know me, and I am the founder of BossOfCulture.org. We are an organization, nonprofit, charity dedicated to bring awareness, prevent, and eradicate workplace bullying abuse. We also provide services to let you know that if you are a target of workplace bullying, you are not alone. So stick with me here. We're going to make sure that this thing becomes illegal. And the biggest thing is I want you guys to know that you're not alone. So if you guys are with me today and you are wondering where is all the positivity in this, there's positivity in this. This is just not going to be what um, I'm going to kind of switch gears today in terms of the previous videos I've done, the last few videos I've done with regards to modalities of how to live an abundant life. Because don't get it twisted. This is going to show you how to live an abundant life, but this is just the down and dirty of how to deal with people um, in the workplace that are toxic and that want to project how they feel on themselves to you. So um, before we get started, let's make sure that we clear our space. Today I have um, honeysuckle, honeysuckle incense. And what does honeysuckle do? You guys, honeysuckle draws abundance to you. It attracts wealth into your home, and it is also said to bring about confidence. So you guys, pick up some honeysuckle incense. I will have the link in the description below where you can get your very own. But in the meantime, as I'm lighting this, know that we are in unison. And so this is coming your way too. And we are releasing any and all negative energy from this space. My window is open. What about yours? Because we are all about releasing negative energy on this channel. You guys, I have so much to share today. So I'm hoping I can cram this in within a respectable time frame. That you're not too overwhelmed and that you're not bored. So that is my intention with this video. Let's go ahead also and get a affirmation in. And I think this is so fitting for today's message. Remember this. And this comes from Florence Scovel Shin. Everyone is a golden link in the chain of my good. Let me repeat that. Everyone is a golden link in the chain of my good. Meaning good and bad. Whatever you experience in your life, know that everything Things are always working out for you. Always. That's your affirmation for the day. So let's get started. First of all, what is mobbing? Well, mobbing is workplace bullying on steroids. It is when that bully, that person who chose you as a target because of something special about you, and we'll get into that in a second, but that person finds you so powerful that they have to enlist other people to get on the bandwagon to bully you. That's right. You are that special. You are that powerful that they need other individuals to achieve their mission because they aren't strong enough. So may that be a compliment for you. When you're going through it, and trust me, I went through it. I totally understand. It is painful. 
you are fearful just about every day because you have so many people that have joined alliances with this bully to make your life a living hell, so to speak, while you are at work. But know that you are so powerful that this is the reason why they can't do this by themselves. So that is the reason behind the mobbing. And know that you stand out and above the rest. You are standing out and there's something about you that they wish they had. There's something about you. It's the way you carry yourself, the way you dress, your professionalism, the fact that everyone likes you. There is something about you that they wish they had. And that is the reason why you have been chosen to be a target of workplace bullying, abuse, and mobbing. You guys, I have to take some notes because I want to make sure that I don't skip a beat. Again, this is your ultimate guide in dealing with workplace bullying and mobbing. And I want to make sure I don't miss anything. So I hope you also have a pen and paper because the information that I'm sharing with you is invaluable. This is from years and years of workplace bullying abuse that I have collected. And trust me, I'm a person that documented these people that did this to me for over 10 years. From day one, when I knew something wasn't right, I started documenting. And I'm going to tell you time and time again that that is what's going to be your ultimate refuge is documentation. Make sure you document. Keep a journal. Um, check within your state what's legal, whether or not you can record what is going on with you. With your phone, we have all kinds of ways that we can record things. Again, I am not an attorney, so make sure that you check within your state what is legal for you to do to document so that you can keep yourself protected in a way that you protect yourself from these bullies and mobs, but also protect yourself so that you are not held legally responsible and you trying to protect yourself, if that makes any sense. Um, also, know that you shouldn't take this thing personal. When, again, when a person chooses you to bully you and to abuse you at work, it is because of how they feel about themselves. They feel insecure. They feel as if they, whether they are, and nine times out of ten, at least in my experience, when a person decides to be a bully, they are in a position of power. So, and if you've ever noticed that some of these people that are managers is a joke, you ask yourself, how did this person get this job? Well, guess what? They're asking themselves the same question. How the heck did I get this job? You know, I, I often wonder when these people are being promoted in these positions, does the person that's in power that's giving them this power say, can this person, does this person have people skills? Is this person competent in doing their job that they won't be intimidated by other people that they may lead? They don't, I don't think that a lot of companies ask these themselves these questions when they're promoting these people. But that's what happens and that's how bullies are formed. They aren't competent within themselves. They don't have the confidence within themselves and that's why they choose you to target because, again, there's something about you that they wish they had. And they're so uncomfortable with themselves and so insecure within themselves that they need someone to take the pain, their pain out of one. Remember, you guys, hurt people hurt people. It's not just the saying. It truly is the case. Again, we've already talked about documenting, documenting everything, e whether it be emails, recordings. Again, check with your state to find out what's legal, keeping a journal, and keeping all this information safe. I recommend that when it comes to performance reviews that you also print up hard copies because in my case, HR went into my file and deleted the electronic copies of my human resource files that had information that was positive about my performance. So make sure that you have hard copies. And I had those hard copies. Again, I documented these people for 10 years. So I want you guys to, hopefully you don't have to document anyone for 10 years. Hopefully that you're, hopefully you're learning from me and that you don't stay in a situation where you have to document anyone for that amount of time. That, but you do know that documentation is everything. And I can't preach that enough. What else can you do when you're being mobbed at work or you're being bullied at work is tell your family and friends, trusted family and, and friends. You know, you can't share this inf information with everyone, but let them know how you're feeling. I know for me, I felt alone. 
First of all, I didn't know what was happening to me. All I know is that I was going to work every day and I was being mistreated. I didn't know what it was called. And when I go speak at conferences now and I speak with people that relate to everything that is involved with workplace bullying abuse, they cry because they're like, oh my goodness, I didn't know what this was. I didn't know what people were doing to me. It's called workplace bullying abuse. It's just like domestic violence, but it's happening at your job. And it affects you in the same way. It has lasting effects like anxiety, depression, PTSD, and other things. And these mind tricks that they play on you manifest in your body. And it can turn to so many bad habits. It can turn into alcoholism, drug use. It can turn into um, you having issues with your family and friends. And it, it just affects so many other parts of your life. High blood pressure, hypertension, um, stroke, heart attack, you name it, heart disease. It manifests into so much. And so for people that don't think that workplace bullying abuse is an issue, it truly is. It truly is. And if you are a company that allows this to happen in your, your corporation, your organizations, know that it's going to drive your health care costs up. It's going to drive up the cost of, you know, you're going to have a lot of absenteeism. You're going to have a lot of people taking medical leaves and you risk being sued. So consider this your warning. If you are a manager that's watching this, if you are a head of a company, know that workplace bullying abuse is not good for anyone. It's not good for the employee and it's not good for the employer. It's very costly and it can cost you your reputation as well. So keep that in mind if you want to turn the blind eye like a lot of companies do and know that this will become illegal. So it's in the best interest of everyone to make sure that workplace bullying abuse be stopped. And you can reach out to www.bossupculture.org to make sure that you are on the right track in terms of making sure that workplace bullying abuse does not affect you or your employees. Back to my list of what you should do to protect yourself. You take care of yourself. Take care of yourself by seeing a therapist. Again, there is a stigma in terms of seeing a, a psychiatrist or a psychologist. But that is the best thing that I ever did for myself when I was going through workplace bullying abuse. You want to speak to a professional, not only so that, you know, you get the diagnosis to find out what is wrong with you, because a lot of people are depressed right now and they're, and they're struggling with anxiety and they don't know what it is. It is good to know, just like when you go for your yearly checkup to find out if your health is work, if your heart is working properly and if everything else is working properly. It is so important to know from a mental standpoint where your health is. And so that's why it's so important that if you know something isn't right, if you have that constant heaviness on your chest, if you feel sick before you're about to go to work, if you feel sick just being at work, the thought of work makes you sick. If you know, you're know you having these panic attacks, you can't catch your breath and you're just sluggish and you just have this, you're just fatigued all the time and you just don't have any motivation. You wanna seek a psychiatrist. You wanna seek a therapist. You want to seek a life coach as well. And that's what Boss Up Culture can also help you with. And when you're looking for a life coach, you want to make sure that that, that person has been through the ringer. Because a life coach is, a, is an expert at just that, life. You don't want anyone who's always, always upbeat and hasn't been through anything. You need to find that person that you can relate to that can let you know, hey, I've been there, I've done that, and I can help you too. And they can help you achieve. And you can sign up with me, one-on-one -on -one coaching at www.bossofculture.org. Enough with the plug. Let me get back <laughs> to these other tips on how you can navigate through workplace bullying, abuse, and mobbing. In addition to telling your family and friends what's going on with you because you're going to need the emotional support, trust me, you will, I want you to make sure that you do something good for yourself every day. Meaning, that don't get caught up in the spell that these people are trying to put on you because it is so easy to get caught up on every day coming home and drinking and coming home and doing something to abuse yourself. Do just the opposite. Do something good for yourself. Go for a walk. Get out in nature. Exercise. Eat right. Hydrate. Do things that make you happy. Surround yourself with things that make you smile, that lift you up, not bring you down. Don't let these people get the best of you because it's all a mind game and you don't want to let anyone whether it be professional or personal get into your mind because once someone controls your mind they control your whole life and that is a fact 
So what else can you do besides working out, listening um, to your body in terms of making sure that you're doing what's right for your body? Listen to these videos. I have a whole library of things that you can do to protect yourself and things that you can do to live an abundant life. So make sure that you do subscribe to this channel. And also listen to other videos on here on YouTube. Listen to meditations, guided meditations here on YouTube. There is a plethora of information that you can that you can get here, right here on YouTube. So take advantage of it. This is the age of elect um, electronics. This is the age of technology. We are blessed with that. It's a blessing and a curse, but take advantage of it where you can. I also advise you to join groups. Join groups on Facebook. There are a lot of anti-bullying groups of people that have been um, also in your situation or that are going through your situation. The biggest thing is knowing that you're not alone. So I advise you to join like-minded people. Now, don't get caught up, and I see this a lot in these groups, and just getting online and complaining about your boss. That is so easy to do. No, you get on there and you lift each other up. You get on there, if that's what you want to do, you want to go on there and vent, by all means do that. But nothing changes unless we all start sticking together and make a change. And that leads me to um, the next thing, which is supporting the Dignity at Work Act. And I'm going to have all this information in the description box below. But the Dignity at Work Act, which is the acronym is DAWA, D-A-W-A, it is a law that we are getting, we're going to get passed here and we're working nationally. And also I've spoken with some individuals globally to make sure that we make sure that workplace bullying abuse become illegal in all states and around the world. So visit DAWA. And again, the link will be in the description box below. Make sure you support it. You can also um, access DAWA through going through www.bossofculture.org. There's a link in all the information with regards to what DAWA has to offer in terms of making the workplace viable for everyone, making sure that everyone can live an abundant life at work and at home. And so you guys, it's all about being the change you wish to see. And that's what I chose to do. I could sit around and I can complain all day long. I could go on those Facebook groups and complain. I could complain to my friends and family, but if I'm not doing anything about it, I'm part of the problem. I am part of the problem. So I'm going to be blunt with you. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Be about making a change. That is the only way workplace bullying abuse and mobbing is going to stop. And it's going to stop, start with you. It's going to start with you standing up for yourself. And it's going to start with you standing up for others. Because guess what? Even if you decide to leave that job, and we'll get to that in a moment, you're leaving someone else there to be abused. And the cycle will continue and continue and continue. We need you to stand up, not only for yourself, but stand up for others. So if it means making sure that Dow is passed in your state, make sure you do that. If it means you joining the support groups and telling people about bossofculture.org and other organizations to stop workplace bullying abuse, do that. Become an advocate. Get involved. But change does not happen by sitting on the sidelines and just talking about it. Now, there is a healing process that needs to take place. When you've gone through workplace bullying abuse, and for many years like I did, it takes a long time to heal. So there is a healing process. And I don't expect anyone who's ever been through something as horrific as workplace bullying abuse to jump up the next day and become an advocate. That's just not, it just doesn't happen like that. So I understand that. And that's why I invite you to look at the healing videos that I have here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and then make sure that you listen to these videos. Make sure that you work out. Make sure that you take care of yourself so that you are strong enough to come back and fight for this cause. Because we need you. We truly, truly do. So besides being the change that you wish to see, I know I personally ask God for a sign. I ask God for a sign every day when I was going through this. When I would be in tears on my way to work because that's how bad it was. I would ask God to send me a sign. And he would show me the North Star. And I was as I was traveling up 696, and that's the freeway I would take to go to work every day. That star would take me almost all the way to my job. And that was my sign. 
you know, if you don't have to believe in my God, whatever, whoever you believe in, your higher power, your source, who you tap into, your divinity, your divine power, go to that. That is your source. That is your ultimate provider. Because that's where I think we also get caught up. We get caught up in thinking that our jobs are our providers. No. And that's where I went wrong because I lost track of knowing that God has always been my provider. And guess what? I walked away from that job and I have been blessed ever since because I was obedient. So know that you may feel like it's the end of the world when you're walking away from this job or if you're going to seek employment someplace else or even start your own business and go after your dream. Know that you have the support of your higher power and that when you are on the right track and you are aligned with what you're supposed to be doing, you don't have to worry about losing your house. You don't have to worry about losing your car. You don't have to worry about eating. God will provide. And I can attest to that 100%. These jobs want you to think that they're the provider. No, God is the ultimate provider. And don't ever forget that. I want you to recite this mantra whenever you're feeling like you are lost and, and you are just letting things get the best of you. And this is Abraham Hicks. I have to give Abraham Hicks credit for this. Tell your th yourself, things are always working out for me. And just keep repeating it. Even when your day is hard, just say, things are always working out for me. Things are always working out for me. And feel it. And know that things are working out for your good. Because things, I'm telling you, blessings often come. They often come in disguises. And what you think is the worst possible thing that could be happening in your life is a blessing in your life. I'm telling you, I'm so blessed since I've left that place. And the day that I was trying to decide whether or not to leave because I was so concerned about, you know, providing, helping to provide for my family. And when my husband, thank God, he told me this. And he said, you don't have to do this anymore. You don't have to do this to yourself anymore. A weight was lifted off my shoulder. And I just hope that we, you are just as fortunate to have someone that is so supportive to tell you. If they see you in that much pain from going to work to tell you you don't have to do it anymore. That relieved me of so much stress. And that put me on the right path. It aligned me with what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. And it wasn't there. So know that things happen for a reason when you're taken off your path. And know this. Know that this too shall pass. There is nothing. Think about it. All the horrible things that have happened in your life. When they seem like they're so horrible, like the, the world is going to, end, going to end. Think back. A month from then. A couple weeks from then. Time passes and heals things. What seems is so huge and such the end of the world right now. This will be a blip, a blip in history of the things that are to come in your life. So just know that this right here, what you're going through right now, it's not permanent. This too shall pass. Ask yourself as well, what lesson am I supposed to learn from this? And this is with anything in life, anything you go through, you have to ask yourself, don't play victim. And I never call anyone that's going through this a victim. That is a no-no. You are either a target when you're going through it or a survivor when you make it through. And always remember that. There's no such thing as a victim. Because when you start labeling yourself a victim, guess what? That victim mentality, you'll continue to be a victim for the rest of your life in any relationship you have and in anything you do. So don't ever take on the title of a victim. That's not what we do here on this channel. That's not what we do at Ball Subculture Org in my organization, that is not what you do because you're better than that. You are, you are something special. There is a reason why you are a target. There is a reason why you are a survivor and it's definitely not because you are a victim. It's because there was a lesson that you were supposed to learn in all of this. And it is up to you to find out what lesson am I supposed to learn from this so that it doesn't happen to you again. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Remember that as well. 
Also remember this, you guys, that what is done in the dark always comes to light. So even if your job, if you are successful in a lawsuit and they make you sign an NDA, know that what's done in the dark will come to the light eventually. When a company lose, continually loses good employees and they continually walk away from these jobs, these companies, these corporations, when you, when you see these people, like, you know, I remember for me, there would be people that I would see and then they would disappear and you wouldn't see them again. There's a reason why. And eventually word will get out. It may not come out from you, but it comes out from the actions of the culture that these companies have accepted in their, in their work environment. So what's done in the dark will come to the light. It's just up to you not to let them get away with it. Not to let, again, pay it forward. Protect yourself, but protect others that are coming behind you, that need you. Do not be afraid. Face your fears. Reach out to an employment attorney. It doesn't cost you anything typically when you call for a consultation. Find out what your rights are in your state. Find out what you can do to protect yourself. You don't have to give them the name of the company that you work for right away. Just find out what your rights are. Also, if you do, if you're documenting and you have all this information and you have reached out to an employment attorney, and you got the advice from the employment attorney, file a complaint with EEOC. File a complaint if you're in Michigan with the Michigan Department of Civil Rights, if it's a civil rights issue. These are federal agencies there to help you. These are federal agencies there to make sure that your employer is doing the right thing. And just like you're being, just like you have to be on your best behavior, these companies have to be on their best behavior as well. And that's what treating their employees right. So I hope this information has been helpful to you. I hope that you took notes. Anything that you need um, reiterated, go to my website at www.bossofculture.org. There is a research page and on the About Us section, I believe, that shares this information. It shares the information of contacting an employment attorney, reaching out to EEOC to file a complaint directly from my site, finding out who your state representative by just typing in your zip code to find out who your state rep is, to introduce Dawa to your state rep. Just send them an email and let them know that you want this supported because this is happening to you. I am Kristen Peoples with BossOfCulture.org. I wish you the best. This has been your ultimate guide in how to navigate and protect yourself through workplace bullying abuse and mobbing. Please leave any comments below. Again, share, share, share this video. This video is so important to get out there to the masses because this is happening every single day to people at work and it has to stop. Good people are going to work every day to make a living and they're being abused and this has got to stop. I love you and until next time, take care. Bye.